So good morning, everybody. Uh, for those of you that have been on here before, welcome back. Uh, for those of you that are new, um, I'd just like to say uh, welcome to um, our new introduction to our new Smart Mr. Range. So I'll just do a couple of introductions first and I'll explain to you how it's going to work and then we'll, we'll go from there. So we've got um, Stuart who's running our admin side this morning. Um, so if you've got any questions during Ray's talk to start with, if you want to fire those um, on chat to Stuart, that'd be great. And I'll try and add those into Ray. And then we've obviously got Ray, who is our chief technical officer. He's in charge of everything that is smart. Um, so the way that we'll work it this morning, again, you will all be muted as, as normal. Um, Ray will just do a quick brief overview of the smart mister itself, the old faithful. Um, and the benefits of that. And then he will start running you through the two new ranges of the Minimister. Um, so over to you, Ray. Okay, well, the Smart Mister is, you probably know, is a device that we suck air in through it. We have a HEPA filter, active carbon filter, and we take all the big deposits away and then we turn the HOPO liquid into a gas and that distributes around an office and sanitizes it to a government standard. So effectively, if you're told that you need to shut down and do a deep clean to reopen, you feel this in, it turns on in the nighttime and it sanitizes overnight your premises. Um, and the mist is basically um, hypochlorous acid, which is a very weak form of acid, the same as we have in our immune system. So it's a natural product that smells like seaside. Um, that deodorizes and cleans the air, takes pathogens out, settles on the surface. And then we're about to do the same thing as a delivery mechanism. So this will be large offices. And then we're about to introduce a couple of little portable ones with built-in batteries to do things like toilets and do one meeting room or somewhere you don't use much. So a small room kind of thing. Um, and that's it, unless you want to know more, but there's probably more dealers already know about Smart Wisdom. Uh, the only other thing that's different is the new um, government standards. So the, the standard for BS 17272 to the automated dispersal of a sanitation product becomes legal. We got it on the 9th of January, um, but it starts in April. So we've actually got guidelines now of how much of the liquid and sanitation per meter squared um, should be on a surface officially now. Okay. So, 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 so the exciting part about this, guys, is obviously we have the uh, the ultimate machine, which is the smart mister that does the um, deep sanitation over o, o, overnight. Um, these products are um, the, the mini versions are so much better in the fact of they become portable. So they might not necessarily do the deep sanitization that this does, but for things like um, cars or like uh, Ray mentioned toilets or um, you know taxi firms ambulances these can go in and would they do to the same level as what they they, they won't do the same level so this won't deliver the same amount as that this is a proper deep clean there's two modes in this baby mode and normal mode or auto and the auto is a, an official deep clean so what you need to do to sanitize and then the other one is like a daily repeat. This is a small space, so it will only do sort of a space of about four people. So your desk and the end of a desk or a small room like a toilet. Um, so it won't do a really big office like that sort of thing. It'll literally only go for four meters round about it. So a 16 meter cubed box. Um, so this is like keeps it top top or just sanitizes your small area. But it's not, it's the same liquid, the same sanitation as this, but not the same coverage. This only does a smaller area. It gives it a lighter mist so that you can be, you know, in the room and it's only doing a small area around about you. And the same with the car one. So that one just fits in a cup holder. And this one actually gives out less than this. Um, and this one's designed to give out just enough to fill a cabin with about five people in it. But I, I presume in this one, as in in the same way as with the smart mister, it almost um, would stop the idea of needing to do a deep clean um, in certain places. So if, for example, someone's um, running a, a, a taxi firm or maybe an ambulance, um, I, I'm presuming that actually you could put this in and it would save having to, you know, wipe down all the surfaces. Um, 
Yeah, one of the th one of the places that we've tested uh, this in was taxis were basically having to wipe down the inside of the cab after every person's journey before they take the next people in. And then what they've done with this is that they've used this to sanitize the inside of a taxi and then they do a very light wipe round, so they're just wiping off this. Um, and they did a swap test to try it, but that's enough to, to save them boxes of wipes every day and all the mess in the time. So they've gone from taking about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, to wipe down the taxi down into like three minutes so they can do more people. And literally that, that idea of actually, again, you know, as we keep reiterating with the, the smart mister itself, it's that that feeling of feeling secure and feeling safe. I know a lot of places would, um, you know, benefit from the idea of knowing that actually the customers feel safe when they're coming back into the into that environment. Yeah. Uh, and we've got a, a chap in the warehouse here. And if I was to run this one in the downstairs toilet and forget to turn it off, so... This only needs to run for about 15 minutes and then turn it off for about half an hour. But if I walk away and leave it on for 14 hours, the mist can build up. And he's asthmatic, so he thinks it's like, oh, what's this when he first walks in? But he's taken one of those in his car and he's been travelling backwards and forwards for 30, 40 minutes going home. And he didn't even notice it was on as he put it. But he's ended up taking this into his house because he liked the smell in his car next day. So he's put it in his bedroom. And then he's commenting that there's no dust in his bedroom anymore. It's basically taking everything out there. So, so the asthmatic guy has turned this into something that he's using to clean his room, to get rid of all the pathogens. So again, these are all at different levels, though. So obviously the car version, um, uh, that we call it, um, isn't, isn't actually giving out quite as much as what the actual no, portable no. version is. So, that, so realistically, the portable version is the, the one that you would try to, to use. Um, the, the, the portable one will do you sitting on a desk or a, a desk with people running about you in a minibus or something like that or if you want you could put that into your taxi when there's nobody in it but I wouldn't go that would be good as well Ray for, for example I mean I, the, the days obviously we, we all do a lot of Zoom meetings nowadays but I actually used to be out on the road pretty much full time and that was my, one of my favourite things to do and I have to say I can't wait to get back out on the road um, if, for example, I went to see a customer and we were having a meeting, could we put this in there and be quite comfortable with it? Yeah, it would need about it would need to be on about three minutes before you sat down at your desk together, so that it's had time to dissipate around. But yes, if you put that in the room in a meeting room, you've got a, a building up. Um, it's a bit like a Regis building that is going to trial it, and the idea is that you go to reception and you hire one of these and take it into different meeting rooms just for that purpose. So they've, they've tried it and for that side of things, taking it into one room that multiple people do. But just get a couple of minutes first to do it. We've also got a, a cleaner that is taking one of these and when she's going around cleaning people's houses, she's taking this in with um, a desktop sign that we give you saying the mist is um, making the staff and customers safe. An explanation. So she's taking that in and when she's cleaning people's premises, she's literally dropping that down so that she feels secure about right going in and then the people feel secure as well. And I think this going forward is really important because, you know, we're expecting an announcement from Boris in the next few weeks about what, what the plans are for the next stage. Uh, ultimately, obviously, offices are going to need something like the Smart Mister, but on a countertop or, you know, when you're talking to somebody, um, you know, we could have something along these lines running at the same time. Yeah. This one is quite happy just to sit and run in the background. Um, there's two modes with it. There's one that will be on continuously, and then there's one that um, comes on and off like it's doing now, so that it just sort of puffs, turns off, puffs, turns off to keep it topped up. So these ones don't run on an app in the same way that the smart no. they actually They're, they're just on. manual setting. They will turn off automatically after a bit of time or the very worst will run out of battery. So okay. you get uh, the great thing for these as well is they are actually quite a good advertisement as well for um, you guys selling more of the, these products as well because actually it tells you exactly what it's doing on the actual uh, product yeah. itself. It, tells, it gives you the full instructions on the back of how to use it. Obviously it's rechargeable as well with a USB cable. Um, so it, 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 and also using the... Um, 
I presume that is that going to go out with every um, one of these ready actual signage? Yeah, so there's a, a, a sign with it that basically says these premises are protected. Um, so they missed it. The mist that you see, so the mist is protecting staff and customers, kills 90% of harmful germs, pathogens, the BS numbers, etc. And then the, the dealers, space to put the dealers phone number and reorder levels, and then some uh, information. So if staff want to read this, this could go and say the counter of a, a fish and chip shop, or it could go on the counter of a cafe or the hairdressers. And then when you go to pay money at the end of it, you can just sit and you know, see the mist coming out and know that that area has been sanitised and any money you're handling has been sanitised. So, so there's one of these in the cardboard box. Um, thankfully, there's in, in the moment, this is a temporary box, but inside the box is five litres of hot oil, um, the, the sign on the sides, and then the actual unit. And it's, that's kind of it. But, the sign will help people understand it and then it will, it definitely makes people go what starts and then they feel more secure about it. It really does have that effect. Uh, right, someone's asked a little question just about um, the, the, the range itself. So if somebody had, um, say for example, a 52 seater bus, which uh, product would they use in there to actually make sure that it was sanitized? You, you, 56 meters, you'd have to be that one and then that doesn't run off a battery. Um, or you'd have to put a, a few of these in, like put three of these in. Okay. Um, so it's in the, the dealer folder, there's a little um, document, and then it's got how many meters and how many cubic meters and volume meters it will run, and then the technical spec of it at the bottom as well, what's inside it. But it's uh, yeah, if you're putting it in a bus, you would need about three of these. Or you put that in in a trolley, um, zap the place and take it out. Yeah. I, I know obviously we're, we're actually talking about the machines themselves at the moment, and I know most of you have actually been on um, these meetings before. But I suppose what we what we do need to reiterate for anybody that's new and anybody that's uh, that's uh, kind of just as a reminder is actually what the product does and, and how effective it is and what it kills. So um, as far as obviously the new variants, um, COVID itself and et cetera, what will this product kill and what will it do? The smart mister, the mini mister range? So this is the, what we have in our immune system that has evolved to kill all pathogens that are harmful to mammals. So basically we just bottled it and made it last a long time. It's encapsulated in salt water. So, it's, it's a liquid that kills um, viruses, pathogens, bacteria that are harmful to humans. And it'll kill all of them, even the ones we don't know about yet. Um, so if your immune system can kill it long-term, this can as well. It basically surrounds the invading organism and puts a crust around it, starves it of oxygen, and then eats the ATP life force of the the invasion. So it's an A blood cell. So when people talk about the, your, your A blood cells doing the work, that's what this is. This is what we've got in our A blood cells. Um, it's been used in food industry for many years. It was invented in the First World War, but it was really expensive to make then for um, cleaning open wounds. And it's in the food industry, it's put on things like cheese and apples to stop them from rotting. So if they're mixed to other fruits, you don't get bacteria eating away at them. And it, it kills coronavirus, Corona 21, Corona 19, um, SARS virus, it kills Nova virus, um, all these sort of things. And having it in the air. Well, it, going forward, you know, going forward, these are the things that it's not just talking about COVID. You know, going forward, people are going to start coming back to work, people are going to start going back out. You know, all these other things that are out there, flus that no one's had for, for however long because they've yeah. not seen anybody. Um, norovirus, all those uh, types of things, this will kill as well? It will, and um, it used to be really expensive and now it's an affordable price. It's getting used everywhere. If you look at some of the documentation in the dealer folder, there's a link to a YouTube video that basically explains what the liquid does, how it works, what it's good at, what it's bad at, um, where it gets used. It's a really good video. And then you can follow links to like NHS things and 
how it's used um, for open wounds and how they use it to sanitize skin. Uh, in Australia, it's used as with nebulizers um, to go into your lungs to stop cancer. It it kills invading organisms. So it's pretty good stuff. Uh, and it, it's like, all you're doing is you buy them five liters of the liquid. You're pouring that in there, or in this case, you're lifting the lid and pouring it in there, and closing the lid, and then it got spilled. Yeah. Quite a straightforward process. I think we've got some of the um, four billion gallon liters at our place that I was trying to pour into that the other day. Did get your muscles out for that one, that's for sure. Yeah, you've got to use the, there's a little hose ending that has a tap. You, you put it on oh, the top, top and right. use it. Up. So if you look, use a little a little cap on it with a, a thing as if you're pouring your wine. Okay. That makes I'm it much easier. That, then, knowing if I that pour makes it much wine. easier to do that. Things. Okay. But yeah, it's a safe for humans. Um, it's sold in Boots the Chemist for £94 as um, a skincare product as well. Um, it's sold in America as skincare and antifungal medicines. Um, in China, they use it for weight loss. It has lots and lots of different uses. So standards wise, at the moment, we're doing a lot of work, aren't we, to get to, get to a certain standard that's coming in very soon? Yeah, they, they, on this one, there's like 14 international standards. Um, we kind of go for three in particular of the British and European standards because they're all to do with guaranteed to kill um, viruses, etc. So we've done all the t tests for that. So the liquid comes with an awful lot of standards on its own. And then there's a brand new standard that starts in April and they're putting these devices and a couple of other things through that standard as well. Uh, and it should be, uh, if we get done in time, the first in the country is an automated delivery system of an antiseptic. So something that will basically kill all the bad stuff. So what's that standard that we're, we're aiming to get to with, by using the smart, Mr? BS um, 17272. So... Uh, if you look at it, but it's in the dealer folder. So if you, if you want to read it, it's actually in the dealer folder. But it's sorry, 17272. But okay. the document itself and how you do the experiments and how, how it's tested for. <coughs> um, this we have to get live virus cultures to test upon. So it's taking time to actually get a lab, an independent lab to um, do that because they're all busy at the minute. But yeah, uh, 17272 is a brand new standard. Uh, we got it on the 9th of January. We we're one of the beta testers for it and it becomes official on in April. So from then onwards, you actually have a, an automated delivery system. And that's gonna get written into things like the wellbeing standard that comes out in September. So if your building occupies more than 16 people, you'll have to prove the air quality and have to prove other and, and this is quite a big thing, isn't it, Ray? Because it's something that we've been working on for over a year now. There's a lot of different companies and different uh, types of things that are out there that are saying that they can do certain things. Well, actually, can they prove it? Whereas actually we, we can. And, you know, we're still aiming for different standards that haven't even come in yet. No, um, and that new standard is actually really good. Someone's actually thought it through. Uh, so it's you're able to use that in theatres and you're able to use it in multiple occupant places. So someone's actually put some thought into what do we need to do with it. It's not an easy standard to actually reach, but um, because it's quite precise and how you deliver things and do things. It's, but we've got um, some spreadsheets of data recording and, and how quickly it kills pathogens. And we've got sensors uh, in some uh, like Innovate UK project, et cetera that we're recording everything from particle sizes, CO2s, pathogens, many different things. Um, and we've been doing that since uh, May, really. We started in April, but May. So we've got reasonable amounts of data. We can't publish all that yet because mm -hmm. the Innovate program hasn't finished yet. But you know, we've been working on the standard for a while. Cool. So these, these are obviously a range of products that we're, we're putting out there, but it never it deflates away from the fact that this is ultimately the machine that you need to start with, and then you can work around these ones. 
Yeah, if you go to a school, a school is say the track and trace database, um, it comes up and says that you you can't go into school that day because they need to be a deep clean. So we've got little stickers that you've probably seen before that we um, you can link to a track and trace database. You do a swab test. So you take one of these sort of things like the NHS to swab it uh, and then record it. So normally what would happen is that they're told that they close down, do a deep clean before they open up. And that means that it can be closed down for roughly about three days if they can find someone to do it. This you can wheel in, run it for 20 minutes in the classroom, stay out of the classroom for 20 minutes and then do a swab test. And submit it to the database and then open up an hour later. So you can be open within an hour on this. And then these will basically help you keep it topped up in that area and then prove that you're keeping somewhere sanitized. So you can do little recording labels on these and say, you know, this meeting room was sanitized with this on this date and keep up a, a information on it. Just, just um, on obviously usage, I presume in with the smaller ones, um, the Smart Vista solution will last longer. How yeah. will that work? Well, it's doing less distance, so there's less liquid. This delivers 420 millilitres per hour, and this, in the mode we're using it at, will deliver 20 or 40 millilitres per hour, and this will do 10 millilitres per hour. So, okay. yes, much, much less liquid. Could we, is, I know on the big one, um, we say that if you use it for an hour a day, it will last a month. Is there any way of, of deducing that with the other ones? Or? Uh, I broke it down into um, minutes on the instructions. So I can tell you how many minutes it lasts. It will cover 924, 925, I've forgotten, um, meters squared in total. Yeah. So if you keep filling up out of five liters, 924 milliliters, and I, I broke it down into how many hours that it will, you know, that will run for. Okay. But it's impossible to tell how you're going to use this because people carry it around in all scenarios. All I can say is how many minutes that the liquid will last in mode one and how many minutes it lasts in mode two, and how many meters squared it will cover in the total amount of five liters. So that is on the um, on the sheet as well. Yeah. Yeah. Fab. Which obviously all, everyone will get afterwards um, as, as per the usual uh, Smart Mister webinars. We'll make sure that we send across the YouTube link along with all the um, uh, Q and A's from today and um, the flyers on the on the products themselves. Um, I, I think you've mentioned this already, Ray. But just just to reiterate on what settings are there on this? There's no such thing as a timer, is there? So the, there's. The setting on the back of it, yep, tiny little instructions, but it's really, it's press once for first mode, press twice to give you the, the half mode to puff mode, um, hold down to turn off, and that's it. There's, and it's basically just plug in a USB charger, a little symbol to charge it back up. Okay. And then that's a battery level indicator that's showing you how much battery you've got left. So if you turn on. So I think you can press that as well, which I quite like is when it all lights up. Yeah, but then the battery won't last as long. Oh, right, okay. So yeah, if you hold it down for a long one, you get a light um, as well, which is quite handy to find it if it's in a bus or somewhere like that. Yeah, exactly. If you want yeah. to take it, it's like a candle in the in the night, I suppose. In the time that I've recorded is including someone accidentally putting the light on as well. So if you don't put the light on, the battery will last a little longer. Right, okay, Mr. Um, someone's asked a question, RE availability, so I'll, I'll just answer that one briefly. And I'll also answer a question on, uh, no one's asked this yet, but on pricing. Um, the way that we do these videos, and I know it's no one's asked it, which is great, is um, we don't give out any pricing on here. Um, if you could just refer that back to your account manager, uh, who will um, send you some pricing on, but also, as I said, you will receive the um, price list straight after um, the, uh, well, probably within a few hours after the webinar, just to show you what the the kind of pricing is on these. Um, as far as availability is concerned, um, as previously with the um, initial smart office, I don't think we realized how popular everything was gonna be. 
um, the portable one and the car one. I haven't got the car one here, uh, hence the reason why I've got the car one here. I've absolutely become ridiculously popular. Um, the car one, um, we got our first shipment in and it sold out within a day and that was over a thousand units. Um, the portable one, we um, ordered in double the amount of the, the car one and we still have plenty of these available now. So the portable one, to be fair, is the one that I personally think is the most um, effective for the people that everyone should be speaking to at the moment. Um, you know, obviously the car one is is handy for people to, to have in the cars, but actually, you know, this one actually gives out more and will sanitise a bigger space. So yeah. I, so um, then I'll get back more of those stocks in. And the only thing is that it's coming in a plain cargo box at the moment because the boxes don't arrive for another few weeks. So it's packed in a, a, a box. We now, the first ones are shipped out. I was just putting things in to fill the boxes up, but these ones are actually packed properly inside. So if we've got one of these, one of them, the Smart Mister and Mini, um, in a box. I know I might end up doing a little sheet with instructions, but you know, for me, it's just press three things, so I don't think there's many instructions. But yeah, well, like we say, I mean, the instructions are pretty much on there, and I think the great thing about this one, which I really like, is it says everything that it does on there. Yeah. Um, and if it is on a on a shop shelf um, or you know in a taxi firm, they are going to read what it's doing and, and what it's, it's helping with. Yeah, I mean, basically, what it says is, um, does it kill coronavirus? Answer: Is it safe? Answer: By use hospital. Hazard information, just in case anybody asks, you know, will I be allergic to chlorine? Will I be allergic to salt? Be allergic to something? And then the regulation regulations, and then an organic symbol. Uh, and in the front, just tells you that it's killing the viruses, non-toxic, it deodorizes, um, it's basic information. So it's, you know, it just says that what it is, is it killing viruses, is it safe? Um, how do you find it? more information about it? Okay. Um, I'll just go on to the packaging, packaging again, Ray, if you could just get the box out. Uh, I wouldn't mind some feedback from you guys on this. Obviously, the, the, the biggest problem, which is a good problem to have with anything that we do as far as the smart range is concerned, is everybody wants it now. Um, now, when we originally launched the Smart Mister, because everybody wanted it now, um, you know, we'd got packaging already in plan, planned in place, but actually it ended up coming out almost a little bit too soon. So what we want to make sure of is that actually the uh, two mini products do come um, in the packaging that you would like to see. So what we've got at the moment is an outer box um, that comes with um, a, bottle, uh, a bottle of the Smart Mr. Solution in there. Um, the um, document, well, the actual desktop document that shows- And the signage. Uh, yeah, the signage. And then the uh, Smart Mr. Mini. Now we are waiting for um, a box um, for the actual unit itself. To come in there but at the moment as we all know with what's happening with the EU which we've all I think forgotten about that Brexit actually happened um, we are waiting for some packaging to come through on that so there may be a little bit of a delay on that so if you're okay with it as it is then the portable version is ready to go now if you want the portable version with it in its own little box as well as inside there then you will have to wait a little bit longer for that okay yep Cool. Um, now, I think what we will do is we will open it up, but I, the, the, there are a lot of people on this morning. So what I will say is um, please be please bear in mind that if you could just put a hand up or something like that and Stuart will just um, let you uh, ask the question. I'm sorry it's a bit school like, but because there's so many of you on, I don't want it to be um, too, too shanty. <laughs> okay, lovely. Stuart, if you could open it up for me. Everybody has been asked to unmute if they want to. Okay, so does anyone, would anyone like to ask a question? <laughs> a quiet lot. Go on, ask me a question, someone. There's enough a lot of you, so there's someone else wanting to know something. Morning. 
Hello. Oh, yeah. Um, how do these work then when you've got multiple office rooms? Obviously, the large one, would it just literally, doors are left open overnight, and it, or would you need to transfer them around to each room? So the, the large one, the mist that it gives out is six, it's only six microns thick. So it basically it's lighter than air. So anywhere that air gets in, if you think if you're behind the fire door and you get trapped in a room, it still has to be, get air in, otherwise the person will suffocate. So it will still get through some doors, but not all doors. Um, and the big one gets everywhere. That really does saturate a, a really big room. The little ones want, the little ones will only go about sort of four meters either side and only just sort of in a particle meter be at the, the level of sanitizing the air and a little bit surface. So, okay, so just when you mentioned like with schools and you were saying like a deep clean in a school, yeah, that one. Yep. they would literally just need the one, leave all classroom doors open and it's... Yeah, so we're doing a test at the moment from everything and... That's four classrooms with no technology, four classrooms with technology to remove um, pathogens from the air and lots of other things. And they'll wheel that in on a trolley. So they'll go into classroom one on a trolley, turn it on for 15 minutes, and then wheel it out to classroom number two when that's not occupied in classroom number three, four, and do it that way. Okay. Um, and they can run it at night time. Yeah, I, th I think as well, if, if you haven't been on uh, one of these Q&As before, what we ha we do have as well is a particle sensor that um, when you put the smart mister in one room, we can start actually moving around and see where the actual um, the smart mister solution has got to as well, haven't we, Ray? So could you show yeah. on that? That's so, on the price list as well. Yeah, we've got a little tool that you can basically um, switch it on. If this number reads above 47, then the air has been sanitised in real time. Um, to a government regulation, 15704. Uh, so there's a little data sheet on it and then a thing about how it sanitizes your skin, etc., and how it works. But if, you, if that basically goes 47, uh, you can tell that it's got to an area. So you can put this at the end of your desk and then put this at the other end of the room and go, yeah, it's working. Um, or a big smart mister, you can put it away at the end of the corridor and then walk around with this and go, yes, it's reaching this area. If that goes above 144, it's in a deep clean. Um, and then you can basically work out how long you need to leave this on to be exact. So if we're talking about schools, Ray, just to get, I mean, and, and, and I know I'm probably going to repeat something here for those of you that have been on before, but just to reiterate on the on the smart mister itself, the big smart mister, um, this can be used rather than something like fogging. So instead yes. of having to take everything out, um, Go in, fog, fog a room, and come back out. Wipe everything down. Um, what would the smart mister do instead? Um, it'll achieve the same goal, but technically, actually, better because it will reach inside light fittings and everywhere that the fog doesn't. But it's also a silly cheaper. Uh, fogging is quite an expensive thing, and it's not done to any proper regulation. It's just the best we can do, and the fogging of that. Um, takes time to do and then you have to dry it off and clean it all off so you're shut for days where this you can literally do and be finished within under one hour so this is an automated way that you, a human being doesn't have to run around with an electric static gun and basically fog all the surfaces around about you and doesn't have to wear PPE equipment and doesn't have to take vulnerable things like you know precious books out of the room and some computers doesn't have to tape up computer power supplies. Um, you can just put this in, it's a dry solution and away it goes. And it's, you know, if I turn this thing on, um, it, fogging is wet, but if I, I've got something shiny. Um, so if you can see the fog coming out of the mist coming out of that. Now, uh, if I put something shiny on there, I don't know if you're going to see this, but it, it's dry. Yeah, there's, there's no wetness to this at all. My glasses, yeah, etc., all dry. So it doesn't damage things like other wet solutions do. So much, it's better than fogging that way. Fogging still has its place, but it's, this is an automated, inexpensive way of doing it. 
And the, and the great thing about this as well is it can be proven. So we've obviously got the particle sensor where we can, you know, go around and show where, where the, the solution is getting to. But yeah. actually, you, we, we do do the, or the, the, the swab version that is tested to a scientific level to, to prove that actually the surfaces are all clean. In yeah. just becoming the smart mist, our big one on for seconds, that went away up to 500 and something. Yeah. yeah. And that was only on for seconds. So that one is a proper deep cleaning of the place. Um, you know, it's dropping down now because it's all settling on the surfaces. But this one is still running in the background, topping up. So, so on, the, um, uh, on the on the bigger one, what square metre coverage is that? Um, it has two modes. So it, it's 110 uh, in square metres. It will do 110, but it, it, to do the standard is now from 9th of January, 81 square metres on the, the, the international standard. But it's, um, it's on the instructions there, but it's, it's at the low end, it's um, 14. So the smallest it'll do is 14, and the biggest it'll do is 81 square metres. But that's like 243 cubic metres okay. of volume. So it would do more if you left it on longer. So if you, if you need to do, say, 300, which is kind of its maximum without it leaving salt deposits, then it will do larger. But delivered in one hour to the standard, mm -hmm. um, 81 square metres in bad conditions. So that's presuming that the weather is not good and there's open windows and there's different furnishings and different ceiling heights and lots of other things. 110 Happy metres squared, if not in a bad condition. And I, th I think, again, just to reiterate, this is a really, really important range of products that we've, you know, we've worked on for a long time for, for um, you guys, for the, for the dealers, to try and help you um, in, a, in a time when it's been a bit of a difficult time with, as far as print's concerned. You know, what we're trying to do more than anything is find business machines that we, you guys can go out there and, and sell to your customers, but also keep them safe, ultimately. Um, I know that um, one of our um, sales guys has been working really hard with um, a couple of leasing companies who have now both approved um, putting Smart Mister through on a leasing um, a contract as well. So uh, again, if you want to get in touch with your um, uh, account manager about that, and they'll be able to let you know um, which um, leasing companies those are. Um, but yeah. Any other questions? Uh, right, just just one uh, just one question. Um, I've got quite a few uh, dental practices. Okay. And uh, I think some of some of them are, uh, are using uh, fogging machines, okay. Yeah. And I'm not I'm not sure what others are doing. They, they I know they have to clean the rooms and leave the rooms before the next patient. Um, how would these work in that sort of environment? There is there's been one company supplying to fogging, uh, sorry, um, misting and fogging machines into dentist practice, specialising that for about two years now, and. They've done all the international standards and all this, so that it works perfectly. Um, last year, until 9th of January, we couldn't officially put that into a dentist unless, um, sorry, if it was an NHS dentist, only if it was a private one. But from 9th of January this year onwards, we can. Um, and it works perfectly. Dentists already use, the only problem you'll get in a dentist that dentists buy this already but they, they, they buy five litres for about 80 pounds and they put it in the mouthwash to rinse out and they put it in the water line so that when they're, they're cleaning out your mouth with the saline, saline solution, they actually, they're used to buying this. So when they read the back of the labels, uh, you know, they're going to realise that it's the same thing they've already got and they're already using specialised equipment. They have a, a version that has a warm mist of these kind of things in a little chamber that sterilizes um, surgical equipment. So they're already used to buying it, they're happy with it. Um, and the great thing with these, unlike, so the, the foggy solutions will do inside dental practice, but don't do reception. Whereas these will do the reception and people waiting, which is actually probably more important. So, yeah, well, I'm going to feel safe because I think at the moment there's so much um, going on as far as all these alcohol hand gels and alcohol this and that's that that these are things that kill stuff. Well, actually, you know, you yeah. can feel quite yeah. safe um, around the fact that 
you know, your, your apple's going to be safe to come back to in the morning um, and, and, and that kind of stuff. Yeah, you don't need to use alcoholic gels anymore with these because right now this is sanitizing all my skin. My skin, after about three minutes in the room with this, will start to feel soft because the six microns um, salt particles will actually start to fit inside the, uh, the dermis, the, the second layer of your skin. So um, you'll actually, it will sanitize the, all your skin just being in the room with it. Uh, you just don't need alcohol gel anymore. So going back to these ones, obviously, and, and the same with the, the big one and the two little ones, uh, they're also quite good for deodorising as well. So not only will yeah. keep you safe while you're in um, the, you know, the, the bathroom or, or uh, a lift or um, a taxi or a you know, car, um, it will also deodorise the area as well. It does. It kills the bacteria. So in, say, a, taking an extreme thing, if you put this into um, a gym, which is lots of sweaty people and sweaty feet, that causes a, a, a bacteria to grow that creates a smell. And this will kill it. Taxis are quite a good, one, a good example. <laughs> so that'll kill it instantly. Um, if you take, uh, say, body odour, that's a gas that comes out from people. Um, it neutralises that in seconds. And if you take the smell of someone just being in the toilet, so too many curries, it removes that smell after about six minutes. Okay. So it's really good. It leaves a... So it doesn't mask the smell with another smell. It actually eats the, the fungus that's causing the smell. And that, so it's not there anymore. So it, it doesn't mask it up with a prettier smell. You know, like putting rose oil in or something. It literally eats the thing that's making the smell. Um, and that ends up in your carpet dead in a night. And it's just back in that way. So it smells good. Um, on its own, people think when they come in to the premises the next morning, it smells like you've done a really good clean and it smells a bit like being at the seaside. So like after a thunderstorm when the, the, the air is um, clean um, and the ions are slightly changed. So it smells like that. Um, yep. as, far, as far as these are concerned, will they affect anything electrical? Uh, are there any other misters? Will you need to turn electrical um, overnight or? So this one definitely won't. This one, won't affect electricals, but it does affect opticals. So if I've got, say, a microscope, there's an optical lens, so this is a self-cleaning coating for glass. But if something like a, um, a lens for a microscope or a sensor lens that's inside a photocopier, if you have this on too long, it will build up a fine mist on things. And after about three months, and you don't use your photocopier, you'll basically have to just, you know, brush it off with the cloth. Um, but it won't break any electronics. It's dry, it's non-conductive. Um, it makes fans work better in computers. It's got lots of positive things, but on the negative bits, electronics, it doesn't harm. It's just optical things. It can leave a small film over and change slightly. I think the one thing that we've noticed since we've, I mean, we've now had um, two smart misters up north for oh, since probably May. August or something. Yeah, May or August, something yeah, like yeah. last year. And I know it's all our team, especially the girls, always often mention how nice the skin feels. Yeah. It makes a big difference to your skin. <laughs> it, it is sold as a, a, a medical product for skincare. Right. Mm. Okay. But yeah, that's not what we're selling it for. Well, no, exactly. And, and obviously, the, the amount of things that this actually does do. Um... It's, so they've now proven that coronavirus um, mutates and lives in people's hair. And this basically will kill it inside people's hair as well, because it's so fine that it gets right into the grain of your hair. Um, so you know, when you were saying about, um, so, so obviously, um, when the smartness is on, it's, jump, it's an overnight sanitation. So, so yeah. you come into the office and actually, um, you know, all the surfaces are sanitised. So how long if um, you know some bacteria goes on on to the solution? No, how long will it take to kill it? Uh, to kill it is um, one second. So if it's already on the surface, so if this is misty about, it's landing on the surface, yeah, and bacteria touches that, it will die on contact. But if you walk into a dirty premises and it's already on this desktop it can take it up to one minute to kill it and it will persist on the desk for one hour 
even if high touch areas that you're wiping off with your elbows and hands, etc. Um, if you don't remove it, if you never clean your desk, you don't take a, a micro cloth and wipe off the surfaces. Um, because it's the six microns, it gets into the grain of wood and it gets in the grain of leather and in the grain. And even wiping it with these, which are eight microns, it won't take it off. Um, so if you never clean it off, it's 18 hours persistence. And if you do clean it off, it's minimum of one hour persistence to get the standard. But in reality, when we've tested it, it's three hours. But if you say you've got a, a mouse mat and your hands are rubbing against it, you have to prove that in high touch areas, all that rubbing on that area will last one, one hour. So you have to put it three hours worth to, to make, make it so that people's elbows don't rub it all off or a cloth doesn't rub it all off. Um, okay. Awesome. Okay. Any other cool. questions? Just me talking today. We like listening to you talking, mate. No, I don't. I much prefer the questions. <laughs> so should we just do a brief overview of what they all do again, just for everyone, so that everyone knows and understands? Right, so what is the Smart Mister and what does that do? Smart Mister has two modes. One, it basically, it cleans up the... It del delivers a, a gas into the air that sanitizes all surfaces. And to, in the process of doing that, it cleans all the pathogens out of the air as well. And we generally run that overnight. So you come in to clean, sanitize premises in the morning, and then you just take a, a microfiber cloth and clean it off the desks and vacuum anything up. So if anywhere's hot desking, anything like that, actually the next day you can know that actually coming to all that. and you're fine. And then there's two modes on it. There's one that does a, an official deep clean, what we call auto mode. And then there's another one we call baby mode, which actually means small room. But and that one is like if you're doing it every single day, it's just it's generally enough to do it. Um, on the negative bits, if you have it on full mode and you leave it under, say, a smoke alarm, because it, it's so much mist, the smoke alarms can get confused and basically it can set off smoke alarms. Well, I'd, I'd heard that, um, I know there's, there's a customer of mine that's actually got one in the NHS and um, they said that they'd um, left it on by mistake in their office Yep. And um, left it on near the near the labs um, for nearly they were three hours in an office probably the size of this. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, in this particular hospital, and I think it's the same most hospitals they have actually really good smoke alarms, so it didn't uh, set yeah. off any alarms at all. Um, but actually, when they opened it, it was like something out of uh, um, what was that program tonight, Matthew? Yeah, that would be that would be a lot of mist. And if you go in that room. You actually next morning you feel really hyperactive because it boosts your own personal immune system, so you actually feel full of life and joy. Well, I was going to say all the um, the, the chemists that walked in there did feel very safe because it smell it smells so That's clean right, as well. Yeah. Um, and just, I don't know what the actual product does. It's just if you leave it on for three hours in a small room with no windows open, yeah. it's going to build up a lot of mist. It's going to, you're going to have trouble to see the computer in front of you. Okay. It's part of my testing. I sat in a small room, like um, only space for one desk, one person room, taped up the windows and taped up the doors so nothing escaped. And I sat with two of these in for three and a half hours on film wood, working on my computer and breathing it in as part of the testing of it. And it got to the stage where I struggled to see the screen. Yeah. I think that's the thing, isn't it? We're, we're, we're certainly not saying it's something that you, because we're, we're saying it's an overnight solution. If it's um, but, you know, and we're certainly not uh, doctors to say that, you know, you should just breathe it in all day. But actually, for, from our point of view, it's actually been, you know, uh, quite nice for the skin, etc. So it is quite good. So um, that sanitizes overnight. It's, it makes all your surfaces secure so you don't have to worry about them. But you can't get that into a toilet. Yeah. And if you take an ATP swab, then you start to worry. I become a bit obsessed with these. And if you run around after people and then you work out if you've got viruses and pathogens and things in toilets, then you want one of those in a toilet. <laughs> it's like, so you put that on top of the system or something and it just covers that area and it makes you feel much better about the person that was in just before you. Um, and then we do a test, you can actually prove it as well. So that will be small rooms that you can take in. Uh, small rooms, you, meetings, that type of yeah. thing leave running yeah. in the background it doesn't produce enough mist so that it's uncomfortable if you're in there and 
like your NHS person mentioned that it gets to turn off after three hours. Um, and you should, there's an app that allows you to basically set timers on it. So on these ones, you would set a timer to say, turn on at four in the morning, turn off at 4.30 in the morning, or whatever time schedule that suits you. Um, so you should turn it on for three hours. And then these ones are just manual and it will run out of battery eventually. So um, going forward, I intend to make these so that they only stay on for 15 minutes and you have to press the button on again to restart them up. I just haven't got the firmware changed in these yet. But um, when we order our next batch of them, um, it's one of the things that I'm trying to do. These, I mean, and realistically, these are for personal use as well. There's this yeah. one and the car one. You know, I, I, my mum is uh, just turned 70 only a couple of weeks ago, and she's also got MS. And one of my biggest fears, obviously, you know, I haven't seen her for a long time. Um, and one of the things that I want to do is to be able to go out with her. Um, and at some point, we'll be allowed to do that. But the thought of passing anything on to her, never mind, you know, COVID, is obviously a big deal. So to be able to have something like this that I can put in the car, um, and, and sanitise services before she gets in is a really big deal. Yeah. So when you go to meet your mother, you can put that into the you know, reception of the hall, etc. That'll cover a little space around about. It'll work in the car. It will not work outdoors in sunlight. Yeah. Because yeah. the UVC will basically um, destroy this. So it won't work there, but it'll work indoors anyway. Yeah. Okay. So in the car one. The car one is the same as this, but it's just the two designed to deliver in a smaller space so that you can drive quite comfortably and it's, it just sanitizes all your um, space without affecting any instruments or you know putting deposits or anything that it shouldn't. So the car one is just so that really think about sharing a car with someone and you don't have to wear a mask when you're sharing a car. You should put this in beforehand before you get in. More, more than one person is in the car. And then when the next person is in the car, you know that if they breathe out any pathogens, it is dead. And the, the, the new standard actually um, has an experiment to, you have to prove that you can kill a pathogen in um, under 500 millimeters. So that space up to 21 miles an hour. So a person coughing or sneezing it out in 21 miles an hour, you have to prove that it dies that um, becomes inert within that space. So it's, it's you know, in sharing a car, no problem, you just basically take one of the, the little ones that runs on um, and then you don't have to worry about getting in and out of it. And it makes the smell of the car nicer as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, um, you know, th this is, these are all products just for you guys. So um, if you need to or would like to utilize Ray, uh, to do something similar, a webinar for your customers um, is more than happy to do that. Just again, just go back to your account manager and just ask them if uh, if, if they could get in touch with Ray to set up a, a webinar for you. Um, obviously, we're not interested in selling to any end users. We're just interested in helping you guys get it out there um, more than anything else. Uh, so that's the range. That's the range. So we've got the the Smart Mister now available, uh, the Smart Mister Portable, the Mini, Mini, and then the Smart Mister Car. Um, we will be in the next. Um, month launching another range, um, well, another part of the range, which is the smart air, so the clean air. Um, so that will be coming soon. So this is obviously a nighttime solution. This is something that you can have running while you're during the day. But actually, uh, the, the new product is something that is actually going to be giving out clean air while people are actually around. Yeah, we've got a lot of data on that in case studies and big premises. So that one's a daytime with sensors that will be on the wall and give you spreadsheets and real-time recording of um, data of air quality and pathogens and lots of other things as well. Okay. Cool. Oh, actually, I think Paul's got a question. I think he's got, I think that's a hand up emoji. It is. <laughs> or is that his real hand? I'm not sure. It, it's very yellow if it is. Can we unmute, Paul? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Paul, ask me a question. You're on camera now. Take your microphone off. That's there we go. Right. Sorry, it, it wasn't allowing me to unmute. Can you hear me now? I yeah. can, yes. Right, good, thanks. Uh, two, two questions. Um, obviously, fairly new to this. The, the large unit, um, according to the literature I'd seen, um, it was referring to mains power, 
but looking at you moving it around, is it is it also uh, standalone? Um, no, no, it's been spread early. It's just plugged uh, in. Here. Right. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Um, um, we did do a trolley with a small battery on it that would run it um, to put it into school. Uh, it's means powered. Yeah. It, it only um, if you're using it in a school during the day, it only takes thirty-seven watts of power. So you can have a, a tiny battery, it'll last for ages. If you're using it at night time, there's a built-in heater, and that heater might turn on to keep to the relative humidity temperature organized. Um, takes a bit more power, but during the day, you, you can run it on a battery, but it's, it means. And these two have got a, a lithium cell in it. That's a 1665. So this has got a battery you can change, um, and this one doesn't have a battery you can change. Yeah. Okay. And the, the other question, just referring to your comment earlier about um, uh, how it might affect um, optical devices, yeah. um, just made me think um, computers have uh, optical readers for uh, CD, DVDs. Um, have you had any uh, negative impact with those? Um, so we've got a, a machine, we've got a test machine that's in a room that's running all the time and there's a DVD writer in that. And after three months of not turning up off, which the room is saturated with this, um, it's not affected it. And I've done a, I've got another one where I've taken the uh, optical lenses and I've got them positioned in different places to try and see how long it builds up. And it's roughly about four months it takes before it starts to build up. But like normal CDs, you can put in a CD cleaner which is basically a disc with little brushes on it that cleans it off, uh, and that's enough. But yeah. so far, it, and that's only if you have this on too much, if you don't follow the instructions. And so we, we've got someone, so if I say this delivers, um, I, I try and say like 80, um, 80 square meters, but people will do, you can get 300 meters out of it, but they'll leave it on longer. But that means right at that source, there'll be too much mist in the air and it might leave or it will leave a salt deposit, a really fine six micron salt. And that's the thing that gives an optical. So if you use it correctly, it doesn't build up. And the other thing we have CD ROM in the optical is it's in a case behind the shield. So it takes a bit of time to get in there. It's not opened. Yeah. That's fine. Do you, not, do you not love the full answer, Paul? That is a proper answer to that question. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else got any questions? No? Nobody else got the hand? Yeah, quite a lot. Sorry? Yeah, quite a lot this week. Yeah. Well, it, it means that we've uh, we've pretty much uh, got everything covered. Um, here we go. For the car model, do you recommend it misting each time someone gets in or out of the taxi? So that doesn't necessarily have to be the car model. Now, it, it could also be the portable one as far as taxi is concerned, right? For... Yeah, because they can put it in. So uh, we gave one to Alton cabs that pick people up from the railway station that commute from London, um, and they put it in before people arrive. And then when they have to do the, the clean afterwards, they just put it in and take it out. So they've, they've not been using it when originally when people were traveling because I gave them that one um, and they use it to clean out the cab and deodorize it. Because I suppose I suppose the thing is obviously the car one, if you're, you're comfortable with having it in your car, then absolutely that's the way to go. But as a taxi driver, I presume a taxi company would have maybe yes. things that literally they would go out and put in a taxi Five minutes while the driver comes back in, grabs a coffee and goes back out again. Yeah, so the, in the one that the taxi company I gave, they've been putting it in the car, they get inside having a cup of tea or whatever in their place, and then that's what they clean the car out, and then somebody else is on the journey, and then they give that out to the next taxi driver and give that out to the next taxi driver. So the taxi company's got one of these, and about, I'm not sure how many, but I think it's six taxis are actually using the one. They just keep giving it out. It's just that peace of mind as well, isn't it, Ray? But they want this yeah. one now, so they're actually wanting to order those ones. I just didn't have them in stock when they wanted them. But yeah, so uh, 
just another, just a quick answer, that? Martin, on the um, overnight question. Um, I didn't mean actually overnight. So this this one goes on. Don't leave it on overnight, please, because you will have what I was talking about about the big um, the big fogging issue going on. Um, so this survey so, so automatically um, operates these by the app. So what happens is uh, um, one of our girls comes into work ridiculously early at about five o'clock. So at three o'clock, this comes on, um, does what he needs to do. And by four o'clock, and then when Pauline gets in at five, it's done. Uh, so it's on for an hour. It's on places like a school room. It's only on for half an hour. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it depends on the size of the room, but it's... Uh, we had we used to use ours upstairs, really big room for an hour. But when I ran around with the particle sensor and then I ran around checking it with the swabs afterwards, it turns out for hours to be exact, it's 37 minutes. So we've been leaving it on for 40 minutes now. And what um, size is head office? 140, 140 um, square metres. Yeah. So bigger than we got on the manual, it says that it does. But, but it's an open plan, so there's 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 no obstacles. And but I suppose what's in the instruction manual is to get to regulation standards. That's yeah. why that's there. Yeah. Um, but when you've actually done the the swabbing in our building, then it, it shows that actually it does get around a much bigger space. It does, yeah, it really does. Um, I think there was a question about warranties, and I'm presuming on the little ones, it's uh, is it a year warranty? One year. Don't intend to extend it beyond a year. No. Um, because the, the, the lithium battery, if people leave it out in their car overnight and it's minus 15 degrees, the battery will start to, to degrade. Um, it's fine on these things because they're indoors. But, so the Smart Mister machine itself, we do a year and then an extended warranty, uh, yep. which will be on the paperwork as well, but on the on the small ones, again, one year. year. Um, but just a, a, a slight side point in the fact that everything is only warranted if you're using a smart mister solution with the products so if anything else is put in there we you know it hasn't been tested to, to to mix with anything else at all as far as we're concerned these are the only two products that go together yeah you, you can get hocko solution from some other people and there's different formulas of it and we've had to work out how much of the ultrasonic, the frequency, to basically turn it into a gas to get to six microns. So internally, we get it to four microns, it adopts at the ends of the six. But that took a lot of working out. Um, and if you put in, say, a water deleted product, it won't work. And a lot of people buy it and they buy the, the concentrated version, dilute it with water and send it to you, but it's got lots of impurities in. So that would just basically screw the machine up and not you'd never quite know what it's delivering. So this is it. The also thing is, um, which is unusual, this has a, a year's shelf life, where most hockles basically, once you've opened it, you have to use within about six days, whereas this can be opened and um, you can have it opened for a year. It's encapsulated in um, a saline, and then we break the bond of the saline in this. So it, it's a stable product. And, which is quite unusual for Hocko. That's why the NHS use that one, because they, they, they know they can buy it one month and use it some other time, unlike some that have to be used there and then mm -hmm. as well. Well, any, any last questions before we, we uh, close up? Pretty much all okay. Um, I'll have to say thank you guys for, for joining us. Um, it's been a really good turnout today. It's good to see some uh, some faces from previous uh, previous sessions. Um, and uh, from from myself, Ray, uh, if you'd like to say goodbye, um, and Stuart, uh, thanks all for joining us. Um, we'll send through. I think it was Stuart that will send through the information with regards to the YouTube channel and um, also um, a video from today. Um, on the YouTube channel, it'll have all various videos on there showing uh, today's video and previous uh, webinars. Um, along with um, a few um, a, a few videos from chiropractors and people that have actually um, used the products, um, and yeah, we'll go from there. Go. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you for your time, everybody. See you later. Bye. Bye.